Hi everybody, welcome to my channel and an art journal tutorial. Today I'm working in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media Journal and I have this Julie Nutting doll, it was Aurora, and it's been in my stash for over three years. And today is the day I wanted to create, I want to use something from my stash. So I'm auditioning it on a background because I am going to use one of my gel prints as an Insta background. And I'm just auditioning them. I'm putting the focal image on top of the different gel prints and seeing how they look. When I narrow it down to the two that I like, I do get out my camera, my phone, and I'm taking pictures of it. And I'm going to look at it kind of further back to make that final judgment and decision. So I did make a decision and please follow me on Instagram at Creative Katie. I may I decide to use this pinky coral pattern. This is fantasy tile, I believe. And I absolutely love the gel print this created. And I'll put a link to this stencil and any other special products in the description box. Now, I did the paint around the edges because my gel print doesn't quite cover. And I didn't want the white shining through. I wanted the pink. So that's what I did. And I'm putting a coat of uh, matte medium underneath. Now, here's, I kind of made a mistake here. And it cost me it caused me a little bit of trouble. I didn't put a coat of gel medium or matte medium on top, which seals the paper. So if I go later and I put paint on this, it's going to stick to the raw paper, which is what happens. So you should put a coat of the gel, of the gel medium or matte medium or whatever adhesive you're using on the top as well. So I'm going to use Aurora. And then I'm looking again. My goal was to use things that were within reach. I had this butterfly. And I'm going to put wings on this Julie Nutting doll. Speaking of the Julie Nutting doll, I will put a link to the video where I show how I use dictionary paper and gel prints to create what you're seeing there, what was in my stash. Loving how the black and white of those wings are playing against the background. You even got some of the same shapes, round edges in the background and in the foreground. Now I'm flipping through my sentiment binder. All these sentiments are available for purchase. You can email me at creativekatie at gmail.com. So I'm flipping through and I'm looking for something magical, something and I'm finding possibilities and looking at the size of the font, size of the sentiments. I'm looking at how bold they are, what I'm going to need on the page, if they're going to fit the space. And there's lots of options here about flying. And I like this one that says, no one is too old for fairy tales. It kind of ties in with my princess theme. But there were probably five or six between sentiment packs one, two, and three that I could have used. And the sentiments that are in sentiment pack one, two, and three are perfect for larger pages. You could use them maybe on iCADs, depending on how you use them but they work perfectly for this seven by 10 page or 11 by 14s, which is why I created them because I wanted bigger, bolder fonts than what you could get from stamps. So now that I have all the elements, it's just a matter of gluing it down. At the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, did I want, do I want to add something to that background? 
because before I glue everything down would have been the easiest way time to do it, but I was unsure of what I wanted to do or if I wanted to do anything. So I left it till the end. Inspiration tip typically does come, but it's got to find you working. And sometimes it doesn't happen early on. Now here I'm using gel medium instead of the fluid medium. And the reason for that is this Julie Nutting doll is, there's several layers of paper and it's fairly thick. And I just want to make sure it adheres. And the gel medium typically does a better job of that for things that are heavier. Then I grab this fantasy tile stencil in the small scale. Now the large scale was used for the gel print. Now the small scale, the six inch one, is for the dress. And I'm sneaking a peek. Do I like it? I'm loving the effect. This is giving a nice pattern to this dress and it's making it work oh so well with what's already in the background because it's the same pattern it's very cohesive and that's one of the ways that you can use a 12 inch stencil and a 6 inch stencil people often ask why would you need both that's why and sometimes the scale matches the size of your page Loving that. It makes it look like a brocade ball gown. Now I want to do some shading around the edges. So I'm putting the tape in place just to keep that white part clean. And here I'm using a woodless charcoal pencil. I love using this woodless charcoal, char charcoal pencil. It does smear, it gives a nice soft edge, it's very quick and it's very easy to handle, especially for edging when you're not getting into fine places. It does smudge and you do get it on your fingers, so I have a rag there and I'm cleaning off my fingers so I don't get it everywhere else. And it's not permanent, so you need to spray it with a fixative. And I think I show you what I use when I do use it. I often don't when it's just in an art journal, but I would if it was on a canvas or on a card where I don't want it to smear. If I go do one layer and then I'm adding another layer. This woodless charcoal pencil, it comes in soft, medium, and hard. There was a three pack. And you can sharpen them with a sharpener so you can get a fine point. So here I'm using the same woodless charcoal to shade and add detail to the dress. And I'm just following the lines that were on the stamp and bringing it out. And you saw me, I got some on where I didn't want it, and you can lift it with a baby wipe. That's the bonus of it not being permanent. But because remember I said the background, I should have put the matte medium over the whole top of it to seal the paper. I did get some black. I'm not sure if it was black acrylic paint or, or the charcoal pen and it dirtied up the paper because it was raw and I couldn't lift it. So it kind of left a, a gray smudge on it. But I solved that problem. You could have used the secure glaze there. Here's SpectraFix, and this is a um, non-chemical, all-natural way of sealing the paper. You can use Krylon has one, but it often has a scent, and I'm very sensitive. But because I, going back, I had this. Remember, I talked about the black smudge I had, and just to hide that. I just splattered some black and that just made that pushed it back into the background. So I didn't really notice the smudge anymore. So way back, I said I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to add anything to the background. I decided that I wanted to add some gold. 
So I'm using the shelf liner and I'm putting the gold acrylic paint on it and just stamping it in. And it just had that little bit of bling that I was missing. And yes, if I was doing this again and I knew I was going to do this, I would have added this before I have everything glued down and I have to try to get in between all these little spaces. But just because it's a little more difficult doesn't mean you can't do it. I think this page would have been cute with a different saying for a child's bedroom or a girl's bedroom. And I use some of the gold paint and I paint, she's wearing a crown. So I'd like to thank everybody once again for joining me in my creative journey. I appreciate all the comments you leave me. I answer every single one. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, share this video and my channel with your creative friends. Close-ups of the finished page are coming up. Keep creating.